Let me check with my tape I did. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Chris. Still shaking a little bit, sorry. Mushi, we're shaking the table. Get down. Hmm. Another minute or so, and we will get started. As much under there as I can. You know, one of the, at some point, I'm good, Chris, thanks. At some point, I'm going to figure this out where I can actually work on this stuff and pay attention to comments at the same time. I have not gotten that coordinated yet. It may take me a while. I'm a little slow on that. Okie doke, it's one o'clock. Um, <clears throat> it's not going to be very long today and tomorrow because basically we have gone over how to make the trees. You've done this, you know how to do the foliage and stuff, so it's just some uh, finishing up details and stuff that we'll talk about. But today, what I wanted to, to do is spend a little bit of time chatting about the choices that I'm making with this canvas, with this piece, and why I'm making them. Um, first off, what I did yesterday after, after class was I did mix a little white paint with just a tad of a cerulean blue and wiped it on and wiped it off with a paper towel. So that made my background here, this part right here, a little bit lighter so that it'll be easier for me to use uh, or to apply my text. Now, when I'm finished with everything I'm doing today, I'm going to go back and I'm going to apply a gloss varnish to this area. And the reason that I'm doing that is because that provides a, or creates an isolation coat. So when I start messing with my text tomorrow, if I put something on here and I don't like the way it looks, because I've got the varnish on first, I will be able to carefully wipe off what I've put down there and it's not gonna stain it or, or leave, leave a color on there. I can wipe it off and that's, that's important because when you're, you, when you're printing on things, it doesn't always work exactly the way you anticipated it working. Accidents happen, so that way we can pull it off of there. Okay, so what's going on today? Um, I looked at this at my papers that I've got here. And these were the two paper samples that I have used, both sides of this. <clears throat> Basically, I've got a blue, a lot of blue, and a little bit of this orange going on. So if I pick up one of my greatest tools that I use out here in the studio, when I get stuck with anything, I am going to, um, I go to my color wheel and I, pull that out and I look at what and the, the mail lady just proved up there some I was got a little scattered there in case she knocks at the door I may have to go take packages and then like come back so just warning you anyway so I've got these two colors and I've got blue and I've got orange those are complementary colors because they're on opposite side of the color wheel when you put two complementary colors together they're going to help each other pop so that's what we want to happen here so here's my orangish and here's my bluish. 
So I've got a lot of that, very little, very little orange. So what I decided was when I do my tree, I'm going to pull this orange here and that's what I'm going to use to create my tree. So in order to create that color, I did a little playing around and what I found that makes the best, this color here, which is the orange, I think you can see that, is a combination of the Indian yellow hue with the Cranacridone burnt orange. So I'm just going to put a little on there. It's about half and half. brush. There we go. Mix that up. It's a really pretty orange. That rusty. I am not an orange person by any stretch of the imagination. It is far from being my favorite color, but wow, does it make a cool color. So we know we're just going to brush it on there and we're going to let this dry and then I can come back in I'm just gonna use this paint until I used up the color, then I can go to something else. Then we can come back and I can dry brush on a different color. That off of there. To give that an accent. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna choose as my uh, color to dry brush on to accentuate the textures there quite yet. I'm really liking the way this looks. I did not go back and add glue on top of this. Um, I just didn't. Yeah, I was too lazy to do so, you know. Six of one, half dozen of another. If you do, great. It will make it a little bit easier to apply your paint if you, if you do that, but you don't have to do that. I have a bad habit of I get impatient and I just want to jump in. So I, I jump in with both feet and a lot of the times I'm just like, why did you do that? So, okay, so I got that on there. So there's my rust color here. But that is not the only color combinations that we have going on in here. If you look at around these edges here, you'll see we've got a lot of purple and specifically red violet. So if I look on my color wheel again, I can see if I look at red violet, what's the complement of red violet? It's a yellow green. So I've got a split or not a split, a double complementary color scheme going on here. So don't have a lot of green going on here though. How can I add that? Well, the obvious place to add that is gonna be the foliage. And if I look at the foliage and I pull in the moss, because I have a lot of moss, so I would imagine that my choice for foliage is gonna stay moss because I have so much of it. And that is a beautiful yellow green and it will go lovely with my red violet. This quinacritone violet is a beautiful red violet and those two will be great together. I do have another option though, because when I look at this, I really, really, really love the branches and I would like um, the focus to stay on the branches, which means I don't wanna cover a lot of them up. So I have two choices that I can make here. I can either use very sparse foliage or I can come back in with another yellow green. In this case, this is the green gold from Golden. Again, this is a fluid acrylic. And what I could do is I could take my brush and I could actually do some um, splattering with this green gold. And to give just the suggestion of foliage without getting a lot of coverage here. And I'm, I have, I'm gonna try that before I paint the tree because this gold will cover up the green gold. So, and if I did the green gold after I painted the tree, then the green gold is gonna be on top of it and I can't remove it. So I'm gonna do that and just see if I like that or if I do want to go in and come back in with some foliage or if I wanna do a combination thereof. Now, the way I do this, the easiest way I found is to just put a little bit on here my brush, I have put it in water, 
but it's not sopping wet. This is a fluid acrylic, so I don't have to have, I don't have to add a lot of water to it. And I'm just gonna hold it and I can tap it. I say, there you go. I don't know if you can see that. And that is just the suggestion. So let me put that up to the camera. Can you see that green gold in there? It's pretty light. Anyway, I, I kind of like that. Do I want to do both? I think I just may. But I want, I'm not going to use very much of this foliage. I know that for sure, of the moss. I'll just use a touch of that and then come back in with this green gold, the splattering. I really like that. Um, also, I would like to warm up my canvas a little. We've got this huge expanse of a cool, which is the cool side of the color wheel, which would be your blues, greens, and purples. And then bringing in some of the warm side, your yellow and orange and uh, red. So I'd like to warm it up a little bit more and take a chance here. I may end up removing this. We'll see what it looks like. This is one of my favorite Daler Rowney inks, and this is Flame Orange. And I absolutely love it. So I'm going to blow off the scraps there. I'm going to put a little bit of it in a few places, and I'm going to squirt it down, and I'm going to see if, let's see, first off, there we go, because I'm going to go right up here, I think, first. Let's see if you can see that. There we go. I'm going to go here just because it's out of the way, and I'm going to add just a tiny bit of that and look at that. Wasn't that gorgeous? Now I can let that run down. I can blot a little bit. Again, I'm doing it before I paint the tree. Blot a little bit of off. And that's again, just warming that up just, just a little bit, the suggestion of sunshine coming through. So I, I really like that, so I may add a little more. And again, since I have, um, since I have gone over this canvas with the matte medium, it has been sealed. Now that's on top of more of a purple but it's just giving me the suggestion in there. And I just, I really like that. So I mean, let's try a little, just right in here, just for grins. I probably use this, this color of the Daler Rowney more than anything. Ooh, I'm just squirting it down in there. You know me, I use a lot of water. Bring it over there. Come down here and then blot. It's just a, a gorgeous contrast. It doesn't have to be solid. This is not an opaque paint that I'm putting on here. This is ink, so I can blot it off. And when it dries, it'll be just the suggestion. And I, I really like that. And I might, I can come back in maybe um, again and see, do I want to put any more of it? Do I want to put some in here before? If I do that, I'm going to do it before I add the green. And let the green be on top because I want that pop on top. Okay, so that's my plans for this canvas. You had other choices that you could make as far as foliage. Remember, we talked about all sorts of things that you could use uh, pieces of sponge or dryer sheets scrunched up and hot glued on there. Uh, Holly said that she might use stained glass. And if you do that, you would inset it into your molding paste, let it ooze around the edges to, to cement it in and then paint around it. There's no end to the options that you have for creating textures. It just depends on your tree and how much do you want to be foliage and how much do you want to be branches. So let's talk about, lastly, I told you this was going to be short today, our text. You got to decide, okay, here's my, here's my space. What can I put into that space? What are my options for text? I like to use stamps. 
and I have several different sizes and I haven't decided on the quote or words that I'm going to use here yet but there's also options you can use there so if you wanted just one word you could make it big like say I just wanted to put B and E B if I just want to put that down there then that could have it really big because that's my sole focus but what if I wanted more than one word then I could come in with the big B. Say I wanted to say B still. I've got B and then the smaller lower cap letters. And I'd have to repeat that L there. There. Or if I've got something that's going to be several words, then I can stay with my lower caps. Whatever. Remember, you could also use magazine cutouts of letters. You can use, um, I had those little uh, magnetic words that you could sync on there. Scrabble letters, word beads, again these that are, what are they called, Jim Holtz Ideology. I got these years ago and I've really never used them, <coughs> so, uh, but I could, depending, but these are really small, so I'm not sure I wouldn't want <coughs> to waste the space on here. Uh, more than likely, I'm going to choose uh, two or three words, and that's it. That's all I'm going to do on there. <coughs> Sorry, I do not have the virus. Just got a tickle in the throat. So I'm going to let this dry once I get all that done. Then I'm going to go back over this area here with a gloss varnish so that I can, if I screw up with my lettering tomorrow, I can remove the letters and try again. <coughs> Excuse me. So, tonight what you're going to do is, for following along with me, do our sugar trees and then think about what you're going to use for your text, the materials you're going to use for, for your text, and figure out your color schemes. And tomorrow, while well, I'll actually apply the text, and I'll, uh, because this is a, a give, a canvas is a, has a give to it, I'll show you what I do to keep from that happening, to, to make sure I have a strong underneath there. So, you got your work cut out for you here. Um, have fun with it. Don't be bound by the conventionalities as far as trees are brown and foliage is green. It doesn't have to be that way. Okay, ever so use your imagination uh, if you've got a color wheel use it if you get stuck uh, if you don't uh, just look online and pull up the image online for a color wheel see what you've already got a predominance of and what kind of color scheme does it fit into and in that I could have made different choices with that I had mostly blues and I've got that brown orange but I could have gone blue and red orange and yellow orange I could have I could have chosen a um, ooh, I could have chosen a split complementary color scheme, red, violet, red, orange, and green. There are so many different color schemes that you can work out. Proven to work, uh, you'll find that as you create more and more and you get really involved in your color, you'll find that you tend to use the same color schemes over and over and that you um, automatically, with unconsciously, put your choices that will fit in a certain color scheme. Uh, but it's just fascinating. Anyway, so that's all I have for you today. Tomorrow, we'll do the text and we will finish our tree up. I cannot wait to see what you come up with. So please, please, please uh, post on Juju's Mixed Media on Facebook. Show me your pictures. Show me what you got. Ask your questions there. And this video, obviously, is going to be on Judy Hudson Art on Facebook. Okay? You guys have a nice evening. Stay home, stay safe, and keep creating. Love you, bye.